Hello everyone, I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are and this is my snowflake motif and uh, I want to show you how I make it so first of all I just wanted to, to, to talk a little bit about the design so this is my snowflake uh, the way I wanted it to look uh, in a motif in a square and this is uh, just the way I used to draw it when I was small uh, I would just draw a bunch of lines crisscross together and put some V shapes uh, at the ends and maybe a circle in the middle. And this is a very very simple snowflake shape and design. And I'm using Lime Brand of Vanna's Choice um, acrylic um, yarn in silver blue. Um, and in white and it's um, a weight 4 uh, yarn and I'm using a, a 6 millimeter hook and so how do I make this motif without frustration? I just want to give you some tips on um, how I make this. I've made a few squares so far and um, how how do I make it to minimize the frustration for myself so that I need to refer to the pattern as little as possible? How do I remember the pattern? How do I gain the automaticity and how do I enjoy this? So there's a few simple principles. Um, I've made some notes <laughs> for this video because I'm not uh, the, the best at talking, giving talks. Well, the the first very simple principle is we start with blue and then we change to white, then blue, then white, then blue, then white, and etc. Then we're going to be working into back loops uh, to create these beautiful lines here. So, yeah, they're created by working into the back loops. Then in the blue rounds, we're going to be making three stitches per corner, like here and in the white rounds we're going to be making five because uh, it's, it's a bit like if you have long legs um, you know you can walk the distance but if you have short legs and you want to catch up with, with the person who <laughs> who has long legs you need to kind of work, work harder and you have to make more steps in order to cover the same distance and so I'll be talking about corner stitches and mid row stitches. So corner stitch is basically just a stitch that is in the middle. If I make three stitches um, in the corner, so the corner stitch uh, will be the middle stitch. If I make five stitches um, in the corner in one stitch, then the corner stitch will be the one that's in the middle. So two, one, and two. Um, and then the mid row stitch, um, you're not going to need to be counting to find it because when you start making the lines, it, these posts are going to be pointing into which which uh, DC double crochet post is your, your middle, your mid row. For example, this one here will be your mid row stitch because this post is pointing to it. And then, so you know where to position your bubble, for example. Because um, it's this one, it's the middle, then you follow through with um, which single crochet is uh, corresponds to the middle, and then which, um, which single crochet to crochet the bubble into. And in um, later rounds, uh, I'm going to be using two sequences. Uh, one is called um, Snowflake Corner Sequence and Snowflake Mid Row Sequence. It just means that in the corner stitch I'll be making uh, um, the, the five in, in the one stitch and then one single crochet back loop only on either side. And the mid row, Snowflake Mid Row uh, Sequence is very similar. Is, um, single crochet back loop only and then in when the when it when it's time 
when I approach the, the middle um, stitch, I'll be making a front post a stitch of some sort, uh, front post double treble here. Um, and then skipping one that's behind it because we just made one here, so we need to skip one behind it. And then a single crochet back openly on on the other side. So single crochet on either side of the post. So this is that's the sequence. And then when our when we're going to be joining, uh, when it comes to the end of the round, and we need to join. Um, to finish the round, we'll be inserting the hook through both loops um, of the stitch, even though we've been crocheting into the back loop um, around. But to join the round, we'll be uh, crocheting, uh, inserting the hook through both loops. It's it really makes your life easier. Uh, it makes it so much clearer to see your stitches and to count them, and they just become a lot more defined. And it's just it will make your life a lot easier if you do that. And I'm going to show you how to change color between rounds uh, with no tails. So uh, when you finish your motif, you'll only have two tails: the one you started with and the one you end with and uh, no no tails in between I'll show you how I do it and um, in the end I'll show you how I join them as I go my motifs so and um, most common mistakes for this um, motif that I that I was making uh, was that I would sometimes forget to uh, chain one in the, in the corner sequences and then then sometimes I would not remember that my first, I would not pay attention which post I'm wrapping my first front post double crochet around. So I need to make sure it's a chain three. Then sometimes when I make these bubbles in the corner, I sometimes forget to make a double crochet on either side. And and the trickiest what well, so what's the trickiest part of this um, pattern? I would say it's round four because there's a lot going on, but also this is the beauty as well of, of the pattern. So, but uh, hopefully I'll be, be able to walk you through it so that you can complete it with no problem. We're going to be starting with round one is start with a sliding loop and then chain three and 15 double crochets into the ring. So let's count, let's check that we have 16 posts. And now we're going to close the ring. And um, insert your hook into the top of chain 3 through both loops preferably, although it doesn't really matter at this point. And insert the hook and then flip your work and then pull it tight, but not too tight. Then um, let's leave a, a tail, we're going to be making a magic knot. And take your new color and make a simple knot around the tail and then position it uh, right at the base um, where your tail begins and um, tighten it and then take the old color and make a simple knot around the long end of the new color and then while keeping this new long end quite tight it will, and pulling on on the tail it will help you to, pos uh, um, to position this new knot right next to the first knot then pull tight and now just hold your hook that's also holding this loop and then pull um, 
between pull uh, check your long end and pull and this your magic knot is complete and then you're ready to cut the tails and now you're also ready to pull up the new color and just yarn over and pull through this is your slip stitch you're joining with the slip stitch to the top of chain three now round two is um, chain one and now we can see e each post very clearly and then we need to make a single crochet back loop only in the same stitch so we know that the same stitch is obviously not this one and not this one so it will be this one and because of these lines I, I really want to have this line in this corner each corner so um, this uh, stitch will be a little bit uh, different than you what you might be used to we're going to be making um, into the same stitch that we just made single crochet back loop only also we're gonna make chain one and then uh, from post double crochet around the chain three from last round another chain one and another uh, single crochet back loop only into back into the same stitch and this is your corner complete now a single crochet back loop only into the next stitch and now from post double crochet uh, around the, the the next post so it will be this one and uh, it, it's easier if you as, as long as you've made your fr first post around the chain three from last round now all you need to do is just skip one post and wrap around your front post around the next skip one and wrap around the next etc and now we're not going to be crocheting into the top of this post that we just wrapped around our front post double crochet. We're going to skip that stitch behind and we're going to be making a single crochet back loop only into the next. And now we're going to um, repeat the corner. So, corner was so single crochet back loop only into the next stitch, chain one from post double crochet around the post directly below chain one and a single crochet back loop only into the same stitch and we're repeating this around so now just single crochet back loop only into the next stitch from post double crochet around the next post remember we're skipping a post and then we're skipping that top of that um, double crochet we just wrapped around and we're making a single crochet back loop only into the, uh, in the next stitch and all the way around uh, I mean now it's the corner sequence again so they repeat the corner sequence. So, the last thing you did should have been single crochet back loop only, then front post double crochet on the next post, and then single crochet back loop only into the next stitch. And this is where you run out of stitches, of both stitches. Now we're going to insert the hook through the first single crochet back loop only through both loops. All right, let's um, count the stitches. In round two, you should have 32 stitches. Now, um, you are ready to locate your first single crochet back loop only. So not the chain one, but the first single crochet. And then insert your hook through both loops and um, pull it quite tightly, but not too, too tightly. And then turn and 
your snowflake and then cut the tail that you can work with and then take your blue and we're going to um, change the color attach the new color so make a knot um, then position it with your fingertips pull it back to the base of the um, white and then take the old color and make a knot around the long tail of the new color and position the knot right next to the first knot and pull it tight and now just hold the hook and pull um, take your long end of the blue and pull and you have your magic mm, knot positioned right where you need it and then just cut the tails get rid of them no need to weave them in so now we're ready to pull up the new color so this is your slip knot S sorry slip stitch joining with a slip stitch um, okay this is round three and uh, round three is uh, very easy so we make chain three and we're going to make a double crochet back loop only into every stitch um, but we're gonna make three into each corner stitch so corner stitch is basically just where you made your from post double crochet in the corner sequence um, and so just another thing to remember we're not crocheting into the same stitch so not this one not this one we're crocheting into the next stitch so one one um one blue post for every white stitch except for the corners So we need to count, we need to make sure we have 40 posts. I have 40 posts. Now, and let's insert the hook to the top of chain 3, through both loops. And again, change the color, so turn it around, pull the tail, cut the tail, take your new color. Um, we cannot around the blue position it as close as you can to the hook then we cannot around the white position the knot as close as you can to the first knot pull tight and pull tight again and cut the tails And then yarn over, pull through your, enjoy your fruit of um, hard work, your new color. And um, now one, two, three, round four. Okay, the, the slightly trickier round, but after that everything is just going to get easier. So, um, chain one. This chain one doesn't count as anything. Um, so it's not the first stitch, it's nothing. And later on when we have to skip two stitches, we're gonna that we're gonna be counting one, two to skip. Um this doesn't mean anything that chain one comes out of here. So now we um, um, wrap around the yarn, around the hook. Uh, we're going to wrap the hook around the mid row post from last round. And then we're not going to complete this treble. We're going to make a, a partial treble. So yarn over, pull through two loops twice. Until you have one loop for the um, treble left. And this is the one loop that you started with. And now yarn over twice again and then wrap your hook, insert your hook front to back and again back to the front around the 
corner stitch from last round and again um, yarn um, over pull through two loops twice and then you have three loops on the hook and then yarn over and pull through all three so this is your uh, front post double no front post treble two together complete now we're going to skip two stitches so we're not paying attention to this one two and this is where you can make a, a single crochet back loop only in two and you have arrived to your corner you should have your corner stitch here now this is what i call my uh, snowflake corner sequence beginning with this um single crochet back loop only right next to the corner stitch so this is the beginning now next step is to be making five stitches into this corner so we start with single crochet back loop only into the corner stitch chain one and then we're gonna be crocheting around this white post so it's a long post so we need to yar um, yarn what's it called yarn over um, three times and then insert the hook uh, around this um, white post and complete your double treble and then chain one and single crochet back loop only back into the same corner stitch behind and then single crochet back loop only into the next stitch so this is this uh, snowflake corner sequence complete now and uh, we're going to yarn over twice and and, and insert the hook wrap the hook around this corner stitch from last round i tend to always when i make my second um post around um around the same post if i've already made a front post around this stitch i just go below rather than above because we want to make these these um as as sharp as possible but uh, you know as uh, your preference it's just just what i do and this is a partial treble so we're going to leave one loop on the hook and then yarn over twice again and then go into the mid row post from last round oh this one yes because the, the um, this post is pointing to it and then um, come make a partial treble and then when you have three loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all three and now um, look this is you already know that this is your mid row post so now you just aim for the one next to it uh, right before it um, make a single crochet back loop only um, into that stitch and then and then yarn over three times and um, we're going to be aiming for this post this time and complete your double treble in full so this is your mid snowflake mid row sequence and then skip the stitch behind it and then single crochet back up on into the next stitch this is your mid row snowflake mid row um, sequence um, complete and then proceed um, making this um, front post uh, treble two together so yarn over twice and go back into the mid row post uh, partially completed leaving one loop on the hook and then yarn over twice um, go into the corner stitch blue stitch from last round and then partially completed and then when you have three you yarn over pull through three and you've already located your corner stitch so you don't need to count or think about it just proceed with the um, snowflake corner sequence so um, 
single crochet back we're pulling into this um, stitch but just before the corner stitch then the corner stitch so single crochet back we're pulling into the corner stitch and then um, chain one and then we're going to be making this snowflake line again into this white post so it's a long post so we'll yarn over three times and then going back into that post and completing this in full and then we're not forgetting the chain one and the single crochet back loop only into the same corner stitch and into the next so this is the corner sequence complete and now we, uh, again we're making yar yarning over twice and going back into the um, corner stitch from last round partially completing it and then yarning over twice again going locating the mid row post and wrapping around that one and then we're joining them together with one pulling through and then single crochet back loop only into the stitch right before the mid row stitch and then yarn over three times go, and go back into your white post and complete the double treble in full and skip the one behind and single crochet back loop only into the next stitch so you've just completed your metro snowflake metro sequence and then keep going all the way around Last time you complete your snowflake mid row sequence, you make the single crochet back loop only right after the mid row stitch, and then this is where you end. And um, we're joining with a slip stitch to top of the first front post treble two together, inserting the hook through both loops, and then turning your snowflake, and then pulling um, a bit and cut your tail and take your blue and quickly make a knot around the white pull it back knot around the blue pull it Pull it again and cut with confidence. And now we're just yarning over and pulling through a new color. Okay, one, two, three, four. Round four complete. Well done. We should have 48 stitches and round four. And now we're going and round five is very easy. It's the same as round three. So just chain three and we're going to make sure that we have a, a double crochet back loop only in every stitch, every white stitch except for the corner stitch where we need to make three from post. No, three double crochets back loop only. So your corner stitches are these, the ones that had the double treble. So to make sure, okay, so if you're not sure which one is the next stitch, so we're not going into the same stitch, but into the next stitch. So this is obviously the same stitch because this stitch is where the front post um, treble two together is isn't it so this is one and the one next the ones next to it will be these one this one and this one so the next stitch is this one so make a double crochet back loop only into that stitch so 
and make sure that in round 5 you have 56 stitches. Now, again, do the same. You probably learned this. Um, insert the hook to the top of chain 3 through both loops and then um, change color. Joining with a um, slip stitch here. So round six is chain one, and um, from post treble around mid row post. So again, chain one doesn't count for anything. Treble is yarn over twice. I run blue post, middle row post, post from last round, and complete it in full. Skip one stitch, and um, and so we're skipping this where the chain one is right next and then um, we're crocheting single crochet back loop only into the next um, into the next stitch two times so one single crochet another single crochet and um, we're making a front post treble so yarn over twice and make a front post treble around the mid around the corner post from last round in full and uh, proceed with a corner a snowflake corner sequence so single crochet back up only into the stitch right next to the corner stitch and then five stitches in the corner stitch so single crochet back loop only chain one and yarn over three times and then go back into this white post and complete your double treble in full and then let's not forget the chain one and single crochet back loop only into the same corner stitch and into the next stitch and now we're making yarning over twice and making from post treble around the corner stitch from last round and we're skipping one and we're crocheting into the next stitch single crochet back loop only into the next stitch twice and then yarn over twice and go around the middle row post double post complete it in full and then proceed with the snowflake mid row sequence so single crochet so we end up skipping one and then single crochet back loop on into the next then yarn over three times go back into the white loop uh, white around the white post complete the double treble in full and single crochet back loop only in to the next stitch skipping um one blue stitch behind and then yarn over twice and um, go back into the metro post complete the info and um, again skip one stitch and then single crochet back loop only into the next two and um, keep going around So 
were joining were arrive we've arrived um, at to the end of the random we're inserting the hook to the through both loops of this um, the first tr front post treble and um, turning the motif over and changing color also don't forget to count your stitches so you're supposed to have 72 stitches so you've made your round six you make sure you have 72 stitches and then you've changed your color and then you've um, chained three and for this round it's again it's the same as uh, these blue rounds we just need to make a double crochet back hook only into every white stitch except for the corners where we make three double crochets back hook only and your corner stitches are these from post double travels and your first stitch will be this one and your last stitch will be this one we finished round seven let's make sure we have 80 stitches i have 80 stitches and now i will just quickly change the color just like before so this is so far what it looks like on the other side you can barely the knots and of course there are no tails and um, just one quick detail when you're making your second knot next to the first one to be absolutely sure that this magic knot is going to work you have to have the opposite color next to it so if you had made the white knot on this side then when you pull it it will all fall apart but that's all you need to know really. It's just a simple magic knot, but positioned right here where where you need the color change to happen. If you need more details about how to make, how I make this or how to make a magic knot, you can check out my uh, no tails color change video. So now we we'll complete the slip stitch and now on to round eight and it's very simple and we chain one and we can very clearly see uh, which stitch is going to be the next uh, the same stitch we're going to need to crochet a single crochet back loop only into the same stitch so we can clearly see that this is still the same stitch and this is the next stitch so single crochet back loop only into the same stitch and then single crochet back loop only into every stitch uh, except for the corner stitch so it will be this middle post uh, where we'll be making five single crochets back loop only Let's count the stitches and make sure that we have 96. I have 96. And now I'm gonna again quickly change the color. So I'm setting the hook to both loops of the first single crochet back loop only. So round 9 is where we make these bubbles. They are double crochet, 5 together, back loop only. And they are made into the middle, mid row stitch and the corner stitch. And that's it. So for, for this round, I had turned my motif 
but to the other side because when I make the bubbles they protrude to the back so I had to turn but if your bubbles stick out to the front then you can you can stay on the same side and crochet into back loops but because I'm gonna turn I'm gonna be crocheting into the front loops so we're making a chain three and before I turn I look at my metro stitch that uh, this long white line is pointing to so it's pointing to this post and this post is po pointing to this single crochet and this is where my bubble is gonna sit so and that means I need to make just one double crochet front of loop only and then the bubble so I don't need to think about it I just do it so front loop because we turned and the bubble so we partially complete five double crochets front loop only so you yarn over pull through pull through two loops and then stop and again yarn over insert hook and pull through two loops so that's two three four five and now yarn over and pull through all loops and this is my bubble and now i'm making a double crochet front loop only into each stitch except for when i come to the corner stitch which will be the middle of the five then i will be making a double crochet front loop only a bubble and another double crochet front loop only and this will be my three stitches into the corner stitch so i've made the double crochet front loop only a bubble and a double crochet Front loop only into the corner stitch and this will be your corner stitch for the next round and a quick tip how I make the middle row bubble is when I know that I'm approaching the middle row stitch somewhere around here I can see also from uh, where I'd made the the front posts that were wrapping around um, I know I'm approaching them, approaching it. So I'm just uh, flipping it over and seeing it clearly, clearer from the front. And I can see this is the stitch, and I can see that I just need to make one more um, double crochet front loop only, and then the bubble, and that's it. Let's count the stitches and make sure that we have a hundred and four. Now the color change is going to be slightly different because we had to turn the motif. So in order for this, if you change the color like before, that means you would be inserting the hook to the top of chain three and then this tail would be positioned at the front of your motif and so would the knot so to avoid that we simply take this yarn and lead it to the back of the motif and then insert the hook through two loops of top of chain three and now it sits at the back of the motif and then we can turn and face the front of the motif or not <laughs> and proceed with the color change
And there you have it. Your knot is at the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the last round, round ten. And this is also the joining joining round. But we will not be joining on the same side where we start the round. So I have my I joined some squares already. And this is the end. So I'm making a, a snowflake shawl out of only four, 14, 14 squares plus two for, for pockets. So I've joined um, some and this is the edge where I want to join. So I need to join to only uh, one side of this new square to just one side of the shawl. So that means the last Round, we need to leave one side um, where we want to join and we can crochet around until there is only one side left so this round is the same as these blue rounds so we're crocheting chain three and then double crochet back loop only to the next stitch which will be this one and the same in every stitch except for the corner stitches usually it will be these bigger ones where you made the bubble but the bubbles are your corner stitches and you make three double crochets back loop only into those So I've started here, then I made one full side and one almost full side, and then I'm, I'm going to join on this side, and this is where we start. You only need to remember two things when you join as you go these motifs. The first one is make your first corner double crochet back loop only, first one and remove your hook from the loop and then take your other way your side where you want to join with and we will be inserting the hook into the corresponding point the mirror image point where we are at so we are between the first and the second uh, double crochet in the corner so we take a look at the corner, here's our three posts, and the mirror image will be this point. The When you made this motif, it wasn't the first and the second, it was probably the second and the third, but it doesn't matter. If we think that way, I think it will be a bit more confusing. So if you just think about mirror image, and here it is, first double, first post, first post, and this is where you insert your hook between the first and the second, the, well, technically the second and the third. So then you pull up your loop and chain one to secure it. And this is, we'll hold it together. And then you proceed with making the post number two in the corner and then remove the hook from the loop. And then insert the hook through the next uh, space between two posts. And this is it. This is your second principle. The second thing you need to remember. And just keep going. Chain one, remove hook. Oops. No. Don't remove hook. <laughs> make the... After the chain one, make the, the next post. Then remove the hook then insert the hook through the next gap, and so on.
So now you approach the corner and well the same thing you made your first post then join with the corresponding mirror image of the motif uh, right next to it be uh, between these two here and then then you made your second corner post and now just join with the opposite motif last post is uh, yours. You don't need to be joining that post. And then just finish the side as usual. So it's a bit like you give one to your neighbor, one to your opposite neighbor, and keep one to yourself. Because mm, this is supposed to belong to you, or if there is another square here, then you join with that square. So whenever there is a corner, you have three posts, and you have your, your three potential squares you can join with. So it's a bit like that. One to you, one to you, and one to you. And to complete the round, you just join to the top of chain 3 with a select stitch and fasten off. And here's what it looks like so far. And here's what it looks like when I turn them before. I think it looks nice because it uh, echoes the design of the snowflake because it's like it's a, it, there are V's here and well, short lines. It's a bit like you know, it's a bit like what the frost can sometimes look like on the windows in cold climates. You have these lines and these like feather, feather smaller lines, and it's a bit like the the frost is drawing a picture on your window. So I think this is this is a nice way to join the squares because um, not only design wise but it doesn't pucker. Um, it's very uh, flexible, it's uh, soft and it will move uh, and, and uh, lay next to your body just like the rest of the fabric. It does, it's not stiff, it doesn't stick out so that's why I think, that's why I chose it. I like the look of it and I like the feel of it. So how do we make the hat? Well, my head circumference is, well, here's the rectangle for the hat, just to briefly show you. My head circumference is 57 centimeters, which is 22 point uh, a bit, uh, half uh, inches. And I, I, I like hats that are, a little looser fitting. I like hats that leave me a little bit of space for the hair to breathe so that my hair is not too squished. So I'm going to choose one, two, three, four, five, six motifs and just to show you how much they all measure. So if I start measuring and this hat, this rectangle is almost 26 inches wide. So that's plenty of room for my head. If you are, if you have a smaller head or you like a snug fit, your five motifs, one, two, three, four, five motifs, this is number five, will measure about 22 inches. So you would, you might want to join five. five. So take your motifs, make, make them like I showed you, one, two, three, four rounds. And then start joining them with, with a single crochet. I can show you how. So just make um, a slip knot on your hook. It's called a slip stitch join. So, and then, 
uh, I recommend that you find this the edges where your round ended and put those together facing the right sides because you'll it will be easier to match stitch to stitch and then you when you make your ribbings your top and your bottom you won't need to worry about wh where whether you need to crochet to that stitch or not because you already took care of you know sometimes when you end the round you're not sure is that one stitch is that two stitches does that count should I crochet into that so if you just it's very easy this is a very short side so if you just start ma matching your stitches now you you won't need to worry about that later so I make a slip knot on my hook and then insert through the back loops of both of the motifs start with the corner and we are going to yarn over and pull through all of the loops so we're making a slip stitch and then chain in one and continue on to the next back loop and corresponding back loop on on the other motif and yarn over uh, and then yarn over again and pull through both loops uh, you're just making a single crochet so it's just a single crochet line and once you joined your motifs you might want to join this one if you I'm still thinking about that because when I'm going to seam these sides together I might want the same looking edge here so um, join them with a single crochet and then take we're gonna start with the bottom ribbing so just again join yarn with the same way I just showed you with slip stitch join and uh, chain three and uh, start making a double crochet back loop only into every stitch and then here as well so one stitch for the corner of this motif one stitch for the corner of this motif and then then you're going to turn and chain two and start making the front post double crochet around the next post so this one and back post double crochet front post back post keep alternating and you need to make three rows of that so that's the the bottom ribbing and then when you fasten off you might want to leave a longer tail for seaming the side and then for the top ribbing is the same join your yarn with a slip stitch join and let's then make eight rows of ribbing and then fasten off and when you're finished you take your take a needle and thread some yarn I'm making double yarn for the strength so that when I pull it it doesn't break or stress too much so I weaved through the back loops of every second stitch roughly doesn't matter but just as a rough guide just up and down up and down with your needle through back loops of every second stitch and then you'll be able to pull it and together and then well first of all you'll you'll might want to seam the sides together and then close the 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 top of the hat and then I made a pom pom. I want a large pom pom and you'll just attach it to the top and this will be your hat. Now I will show you how to make the mittens. According to the Craft Yarn Council, my hand is a medium size, although I, I always end up buying large rubber gloves, for example, because I find the medium or small are way too small. 
So my hand circumference measures about 7.5 inches and this uh, medium fits me perfectly so my hand is a medium so if you're a smaller or a bigger I think the same size mitten will fit you nicely because you know it's yarn so it stretches a little or ad uh, adapts to your body shape uh, easily enough as soon as you start wearing it so for the mitten you're gonna need to make for the two mittens uh, four motifs four rounds each and then both mittens are going to be exa made exactly the same, but as you start wearing them, they will shape to your hand and then you'll start to recognize which one is right, which one is left. But also if you want to uh, distinguish between left and right, you can just make, a, for example, a mini pom-pom here. I think that would be really cute if you attached one here, for example. So both mittens are made exactly the same way. So... First of all, we start with joining one full side of two motifs here and then we make the cuff by, I'll show you, but there's eight rounds of ribbing and so I can show right now. So again, start with a slip knot on your hook and for the mittens, because it's a, a bit of a snug fit and then when you put it on it stretches in places and then you want it to spring back to the size it was for example, you know, so that it hugs your hand. So I I noticed that these, if I just do the back loops for, for the corners or for where it stretches a lot and it stretches too much. So I thought that with the second mitten I should rather put the hook through both of the loops for each motif, so four loops together, not just the back loops, just your normal, the way you normally insert your hook, because that will stop the, the mitten stretching too much. So for the corner, for example, of the, when you start doing the motifs, put your hook through both loops of the first motif and both loops of the corner of the back motif and then yarn over pull through all of the loops together and then to be consistent with the design to keep these lines going that are the front loops are left and create these lines so then I switch to going through the back loops again so we're we're at the end of joining one full side of the two motifs and I'm gonna put, insert the hook through both loops of the first motif and both loops of the back motif in the corner and this is my sec uh, my last single crochet for this side and now I'm going to uh, chain three and I'm gonna start making this cuff so I'm not going to crochet into the corner stitch anymore because our goal is to slightly make it a narrower uh, at the wrist so it's an easy way to skip a stitch and now I'm just going to make double crochet back up only into um, every stitch around but I'll show you what happens when I come to the corner. So I have one more stitch left, so which is the corner. So I'm gonna take both of the motifs together and yarn over and put the hook through both loops of the corner of the first motif. And also I can do it either way, this way or this way. 
think it doesn't matter. So and through the corner stitch through the both loops of the corner stitch of the uh, next motif, back motif, and then just complete the double crochet in this uh, post joined this corner for me and I'm just going to flip to the other side and continue with double crochet back off only into the next stitch and until the end of this round I've crocheted into the last stitch just before the corner stitch of this side and I've come to do the chain 3 and I'm just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of chain 3 inserting the hook through both loops and now we're going to start making the front post stitches so let's chain 2 and then we're not doing anything to this one but we're making a front post double crochet around the next post And a back post, double crochet around the next post. And this is your ribbing, so you keep alternating between the two front post, back post, all the way around. So I've made a front post double crochet around the last post before the chain three, and this is where my second run ends so now i find where my chain two was and i find the top of chain two and i'm gonna join insert the hook through both loops and join with a slip stitch to the top of chain two so you have two two uh, rounds completed and you need to make six more and then fasten off and um, you can start weaving the ends because uh, it's easier while, 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 while the structure is still so open so it's easy to access to uh, weave the ends and then I'll meet you when I'm finished with the cuff also forgot to say that at least for me personally when I make ribbing I very easily lose the count of how many rows I've done especially when it's beyond three or so so I just start marking where my first chain three and chain two was so just to clarify what you are repeating until you have eight rows is you're making chain two and you're making you're matching your your posts front with front and back with back and uh, so I'm making front post, chain two, front post, back post, uh, front post, back post, etc. So we made the cuff, and now we're gonna make, we're gonna join the motifs on this side halfway, and then make the top. So we're gonna start with the slip stitch again, slip knots on your hook, and slip stitch join through both loops go find your middle stitch of this side which is very easy because this, this uh, line is pointing to it but insert your hook through both loops of this uh, front motif and through both loops of the back motif of exactly the same uh, stitch corresponding stitch and then yarn over and pull through and um, make a slip stitch and then chain one and then we're gonna go through the back loops of the motifs now and um, just double check that the stitches match and keep joining till the top uh, of the side till the end of the side And when you reach the, the when you only have one stitch left, the corner one, insert your hook through both loops of the front motif and the both loops of the back motif, and uh, single crochet. And now we're gonna similarly as with the cuff, 
to the bottom of the mitten we're going to chain three and because we're making uh, double crochets plain double crochets at the top uh, no front pose back pose double crochets so we're gonna make double crochets back up only for the first round and find your next stitch not the corner stitch and I'll show you what to do in the corner here so you you have your corner stitch left you've reached the end of this top of the motif and what I do is I I want to make one post per these two stitches so just insert the hook front to back through the first corner and front to back through the second corner and then take yarn over and pull through and complete your post and then uh, from for the double crochet back loop only into the next stitch next to the corner stitch and uh, complete this round so your last stitch of the round is th in the stitch just before the corner stitch and now I'm just gonna find the top of the chain 3 and insert the hook through both loops and join with a slip stitch and uh, chain 3 and we're going to just make a round of double crochets into each stitch around and you need to make one two three more three more rounds of simple plain double crochets and I'll meet you at the top of the mitten when we complete the last round so here we are at the top of our mitten and fasten off and leave your tail a little bit longer and take your um, yarn needle and thread it with the yarn tail and now all we're gonna be doing is just weaving the needle through the back loops of approximately every second stitch just like with a hat and we're doing this to close the gap of course and when you're done just secure with a few more stitches close the opening and then just pull it tight and then take your needle to the other side and then turn your or just access it through the opening or just turn it inside out and then make sure you secure you can take your needle through a few times just to secure and then fasten off and that will be your top finished and I'll just go ahead and do that so here we are with our progress so far so we are going to make with the blue make a slip knot again and leave the tail for weaving in and we're making the finger so we're locating the this stitch where we had the front post double two together and we're inserting the hook through wait both loops or not no just one loop but the back loop and um, we are making a slip stitch and a chain one so this first round is going to consist of single crochets and double crochets at the bottom here because we need to make that part longer and this is the top of the mitten so single crochets because we donate a lot of fabric here so we're gonna make so this is one single crochet two now this is the the joining point and again I'm I want to make one single crochet 
for these two um, stitches because I need to tuck it in a little bit. So just insert the hook front to back and of the first motif and front to back of the second motif and yarn over and pull through the yarn and complete your single crochet uh, as usual. And then onto the next. So that's one, two, three, four. Five. Five single crochets at the top and the rest are double crochets. Back loop only. And when we reach the bottom, um, again, I'm going to make one stitch on post for these two stitches. So yarn over and insert a hook front to back of the first stitch, front to back of the second stitch. And uh, complete the double crochet as usual, just four, and then sing, um, double crochet back up only into the next stitch. <coughs> And seven. Uh, in the last mitten, I also had five single crochets and seven double crochets for my first round. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet, insert the hook through both loops, and slip stitch. Now, for the second round, we're going to make again five single crochets where we had single crochets and then when we come to these three at the bot at the bottom one being the middle with the middle and one on either side gonna make a double crochet three together so we're making uh, after the slip stitch chain one and then single crochet into the same Stitch and single crochet into every single crochet and double crochet to start with into every double crochet where are my three bottom stitches so the next one is the first of the three so I'm gonna yarn over and insert the hook and partially complete this first double crochet so pull through two loops once then again the same with the next stitch partially complete your double crochet halfway through and the third one we're tacking this in because we don't need this extra fabric otherwise it will be too bulky so we need to uh, nip the nip this in and then you have four loops on the hook and then yarn over and pull through all of them and then complete the round with a double crochet into the next stitch and complete the round by joining with a slip stitch to the first single crochet round three is again we're gonna match single crochets into every single crochet then double crochets into every double crochet including this uh, double crochet three together so chain one and single crochet into this same stitch and a few more single crochets and double crochets for the double crochets and then just again join with a slip stitch to the top of first single crochet through both loops now we have only two rounds left so we've made 
have only two rounds left and both of them are very simple double crochets around the chain three and double crochet into every stitch join with a slip stitch to the chain top of chain three again and again chain three and uh, I'll meet you at the top so you complete your five rounds of the finger and uh, for the top just do the same, fasten off, leave a slightly longer tail, thread your need yarn needle and then weave your needle through approximately every second back loop of every stitch and